What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today, I'm going to hit you up with some thoughts and opinions on this newest album from Fonte called No News Is Good News. Now Fonte is an artist who is well known for the tremendous work he did with Little Brother and Foreign Exchange, and he even came together with Eric Roberson to form the R&B group Tigalero. They actually put out an album that made my top 10 the year that it dropped, I believe that was 2016, and they do have a track together on here that is called Find That Love Again. So if you like that album, you're certainly going to like that track because it feels like it could have fit right in. But when it comes to Fonte himself, he is an artist who I have long respected because his pen game is on point. He's got plenty of great verses throughout his career, especially some of that older Little Brother stuff. I really love all of that. And another thing about him is that he just sounds so smooth and natural when he raps. He's not one of these rappers who sounds like they're really forcing themselves in any type of way. He just is a damn good rapper, and it shows. So there are a lot of great moments on this. And as far as the production, you are getting a lot of light, breezy, soulful vibes, as you would expect from him. If you're familiar with his work in those groups, as well as his solo work, you always know he comes through with those smooth vibes, a little bit of neo-soul and soul influence, great bass lines, all these things, and that's what you're going to get here. In particular, Pastor Tigolo does have a little bit of that neo-soul vibe, and I also got to point out that this album is very short and cohesive. It's only about a half an hour long, so there is nothing being wasted on this project. I thought it flowed together very nicely, and you do get a little bit of variety. But to come back to Fonte's pen game, I gotta talk about the song So Help Me God. I love the production on this, you're getting some glorious drums and piano from Marco Polo, there's just a lot of punch to this beat, and there are a lot of bars on here, so I had to make sure I wrote them down. One of the ones I liked is when Fonte spits, they say they want bars but it's unfounded, cause when they get bars, niggas is dumbfounded. And I thought this was really cool because there are rap fans like that. They complain about how they want more content and they want more concepts and bars, but then sometimes when they get it, they complain that it's too complicated or it's not exactly what they wanted. So I definitely appreciate Fonte speaking on that. And on the same song, he also brings up the rappers who constantly drop weak shit. They don't disappear for a while to really hone their craft and put out meaningful work. They're just always flooding stuff out there. So I didn't take that as Fonte hating on these guys. He's just kind of speaking on the state of the game and how he sees it. As an old head myself, I certainly agree with most of what he's saying on here. So, the album really does pick up once you get to about the middle part. I do like the beginning of it, but once we get that song Expensive Jeans, man, this shit goes into high gear. I absolutely love this track because it deals with health issues that are very common with black people, stuff like heart disease, diabetes, and sleep apnea, and he's really kind of speaking on some of his own ideas and experiences on this one. He warns us not to dig a grave with our own teeth, and I thought that was a cool line because I had never heard that before, but the line that really hit me is when he said that young niggas are dying of old nigga shit and it seems like 40 is three quarters life. That shit is so true, man. I mean, I'm only 33, but I notice as I get older, I can't just eat anything I want to eat anymore, man. Certain shit is going to have an effect on me. It's not like back when I was a kid and, you know, when you were a kid, you could, like, live off Halloween candy for a week and come out of it all right. You might have a bit of a tummy ache, but, you know, as you get older, you certainly begin to realize that you do have certain health issues you got to watch out for. you got to take more care of yourself, and that's really what I took away from this track. Now, this track actually flows perfectly into the next song called Cry No More. On this one, Fonte is dealing with the death of his father, who passed away as a result of some of these issues, and it gets pretty deep because Fonte is actually at the repast eating the same type of food that killed his dad. I really love just how mature this album is and how Fonte is getting deep and getting personal, so that's something that I think is going to relate to a lot of people. I'm really not sure how it's going to go over with some of the younger people out there, but for people who are a little bit older like myself, not dating myself, I think you're really going to relate to a lot of the content on here. So. This track also has some lessons about the bond between father and son and how we should really cherish it while we have it because, you know what, you only have so much time and once one of you is gone, that's where it ends. So I really appreciate that message. And the line that stuck with me here is when he says, you basically got to appreciate your father because by the time you realize your father was right, you're going to have your own son telling you that you were wrong. That shit is deep, man. I mean, my kids are only little, but I'm already feeling that shit, man. As I get older, I notice myself doing things my dad used to do, saying things my dad used to say, and realizing that my kids can be some little bastards just like I was. You know what I mean? They can be a handful sometimes. So there really is a lot of great content on this. You're going to get a lot of gems, going to be thinking a lot as you listen through. And again, it's very short and cohesive, so you're not getting a lot of waste. But as for the last stretch of this album, things do get a little bit lighter. 
We get some more Fonte vocals on songs like Change of Mind. This has an incredibly smooth beat, as well as a Freddie Gibbs feature. And I think these two showcase great chemistry. Hearing these two on this track really wants me hearing more of a collab from them, man. Imagine if they came together and did a full project. I would definitely be buying that shit. Now we also get the track Sweet You, a very nice lovey-dovey track. And on this one, he's saying that he's letting go of his past mistakes. Just the mistakes that he was making in his 20s when he was out there fucking around. I was really feeling that because it's showing you that, you know, he's in love and he's really trying not to get caught up with some of the old shit he used to do. And this topic pops up again on Euphorium. He actually looks back at his bachelor lifestyle and warns us not to become slaves to our impulses. So again, man, you're getting some really great content here. This is a grown ass rap album, real rap, mature shit. And I appreciate that, man. I can only listen to so much trap and drug shit myself. So anytime an artist does this, I got to show love. So, you know, as I said, I'm honestly not sure how some of the younger people will take this. It still is a really great album. I'm just saying that connection might not be there with the content. But you know what? He's just so open and honest on here. And I think you'll still find something that you might be able to resonate with. Even on the song Such Is Life, he says this bar where he says that when people listen to him, all they hear is one of the greats. But when he listens to it, all he hears is the mistakes. I think this is something that any artist or creator can relate to. I even get it myself with these videos, man. I know whenever I watch my videos back, I'm like, fuck, I could have fixed that. The audio's off here. Could have cut this better. Could have done this. Could have done that. And you know, that's how it is with an artist, especially when you're a perfectionist. So that was another line I thought was cool. And people might be able to take something from that. So... Needless to say, man, based off my ranting and raving here, this is a damn good album. I'm going to go with a 4 out of 5. I do think the production was pretty safe and pretty standard for what you expect from Fonte. Not to say that's a bad thing, but, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of chances being taken here. Although that last track is a little bit experimental. And this isn't really a big knock on it. I'm just saying, you know, this is part of the reason why I would go with a 4. I didn't feel like there were too many boundaries being pushed or anything like that. And you don't always got to do that. So this is still a really dope album. And my least favorite track would be To The Rescue. This one's not even a bad track, really. It's just an intro track. It really just sets everything up, so I didn't think it was a great track compared to the rest of them, but it is what it is, man. Gotta pick a least favorite, and that's what I'm gonna go with. So there you have it. Four out of five seems fair to me. Another great project. This year is just owning our asses, man. Compared to last year, I feel like already I could make a top ten list. This time last year, I probably would have been struggling just to find four or five projects I loved. So thank you, Rap Gods, for all the good shit. Thank you, Fonte, for this. Thank you, Crisis and Elzai, Evidence, Payroll, Cardo. Like, man, there's been all kinds of dope projects. I know I'm forgetting some, but you know what? I reviewed them, so check them out. But that's all I got to say here. Hopefully you guys check this out and then hit me up in the comment section with your thoughts. And of course, man, you know where I'm at. So show me love and show me lots of it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.